Uh, welcome back. Uh, uh, we've got a guest today, and uh, his name is Ray Martel. And so, Ray, welcome to uh, Spirit Lab Television. Uh, we thank God uh, for uh, what he's done in your life. And so, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself so that our viewers across the nation, of course, in your region, people would actually know who you are. And uh, mm -hmm. so, uh, introduce yourself to the people out there in, the, in our area and across Canada here. Well, thank you, Roma, uh, Pastor Roma. It's really been a pleasure being up here and uh, uh, having an opportunity to meet all you people. And just so, so wonderful to, that what God is doing, in, not only in your life, but also in my life. I just look back and see the grace of God and what God has been doing uh, for the last about 38 years where I, God saved me off the, you know, the, after rough life and, you know, is it, uh, through addictions and... Uh, uh, alcoholism and you know a lot of uh, uh, rough life I had mm -hmm. and but but by the grace of God God came in my life because one person was uh, that had the love of God in his life and was uh, able to share the love of Jesus to me and I, I you know as a street person in those days I, I checked him out you know and I could see that this man was different he was really sincere and he really cared for me, mm -hmm. and that's very that was very unusual for me. And uh, uh, that's what broke broke me into the the to really op be open to him and uh, mm -hmm. be get touched by God. And uh, and it was a Mennonite brother, who's still a good friend of mine. I still consider him my spiritual father, mm -hmm. Reuben Block, and uh, as a Mennonite. And, but uh, and then I had a strong call when God saved me. Mm -hmm. But I had a lot of issues in my life, and. Uh, you know what happens when you get saved? I, st I was had bleeding ulcers. Yep. I was very sick, and because of bleeding ulcers, and every time I ate or, you know, drank coffee, I get sick. But you know, after getting saved, after giving my life to Jesus, the amazing thing happened. I began to read the Word of God, and the amazing thing happened that I came across uh, a scripture, Matthew six twenty six. Mm -hmm. Behold, the fowls of the earth. It is they sow not, neither do they reap. Yet your heavenly Father feed them. Aren't you much better than they? Mm -hmm. And right then and there, because I was raised up in a bush, you know, raised up hunting, and I know about birds and animals. Uh, I know their their what they do, and uh, I could see how God is grace uh, to care for the animals and to make provision for them. They mm -hmm. were never, they never had to worry about getting fed because God created a natural environment for them. Mm -hmm. And right there he says, aren't you much better than they? Yeah. And right then and there I realized that I had a Father in Heaven would take care of me. And right then and there I knew that I didn't have to worry anymore because as soon as I worried, I, my, my stomach would start bleeding. And I used to carry Maalox everywhere I went, you know, just coat my stomach. But right there I could... I could eat a greasy hamburger. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. And because even I, if I worried about worrying, I get sick. And uh, because of that, uh, that word of God and the word of God came. I was so excited. I ran around telling people, "Look at what, look what God's telling me. I don't have to worry anymore. <laughs> and I know God would take care of me." Uh, he said, "Aren't you much better than they?" And and yeah. because of creation, thank God for the beauty of creation. But God was able to save me. And also set me free from yeah. those addictions. I didn't have to worry. I didn't have to uh, even even about what people thought about me, because mm -hmm. I had a lot of very conscious of what people thought about me, and mm -hmm. that's why I was maybe uh, a lot of insecurities in my life. Mm -hmm. But but the grace of God, I began to realize that God loved me. Mm -hmm. It's the perfect love. The Bible says that takes away all fear, and and many of our native people are suffering through anxiety because of hurt, abuse. And the greatest answer is Jesus. Jesus Christ comes into our life and, and does the change. We cannot change ourselves, but when we open our heart and surrender to that change, God brings a change and the joy of the Lord and the peace that passes. I mean, the first time I seen the sky that was blue <laughs> and be able to see the colors, you know, I can, you couldn't imagine how beautiful, you know, because God opens your eyes when you're saved. And uh, right. because of that, and then, then after I got filled with the Holy Spirit, and and right then and there, I I began to have revelation of the Word of God. So, so um, you're you're saved almost forty years ago now. You said, and, yes. Uh, you've been ministry almost. You went to ministry right after. Shortly and, after, but and, uh, yes. 
And so you, you've been serving God all those years. Um, you're from the Saskatchewan, is that the Saskatoon area? Saskatoon? Well, I'm from, I was, uh, I'm from the northern Saskatchewan. Northern Saskatchewan. My reserve is uh, Waterhand Lake Reserve, north of Meadow Lake. And uh, you're from the Cree Nation. The Cree Nation, yeah, okay. Cree. Yeah. So what was like growing up for you as a First Nations uh, man? Well, I well I had a rough life. I mm -hmm. had really we had to you know it was it was tough living. You know what we ate, what we ate was what we caught. You know yeah. it was rough because my dad didn't have uh, uh, work. It was always doing different things yeah. into working, but uh, but but it's amazing how God provided for us. Yeah. You know. So oh. you, you grew up, uh, your dad impoverished, and your dad had, was lacking in work and that kind of stuff? Yeah, he did almost was, everything. Was there addictions I mean, involved in your family? Oh, definitely. Uh, when he started, we start, my mom and dad started drinking. That's when really mm -hmm. things, and then, of course, at a very young age, at 12 years old, I started drinking. You, you know? did? Yeah, very young, yeah. Okay. So uh, you, did you end up getting hooked on anything? Yeah, because it gave you confidence, false confidence, right? Yeah. Uh, like uh, doing drugs, it gives you a, fa a false uh, security. Right. You know, it doesn't last, right? Because, <laughs> uh, like I say, I was hung over, but now I'm hung, uh, now I'm hung up. <laughs> <laughs> you hung up on the Lord. I hung up on the Lord. Then. So, so you, um, uh, when did you um, get off? Uh, kind of like the street stuff that you were you're living, living. Well, uh, I, I look at it this way. You know, when we're we we come off the street. We have a street mentality, right? Yeah. Uh, like, we can have a certain mentality of uh, recognizing uh, uh, our surroundings, being comfortable around our surroundings mm -hmm. and poverty, and assume that's our, our fellowship. But I realize there's a there's more more to, for us, and uh, I begin to uh, I begin to see that because I you know the pawn shop was regular. My support, you know, whenever I needed something, I'd pawn something. Yeah. But I didn't. Gradually, you know, you don't don't have anything. Mm -hmm. and, but uh, but when I got saved, I began to read the Word of God, Philippians four nineteen. My God shall supply all my needs. It doesn't mean that I'm not going to do anything, but I could do something. And God created, mm -hmm. gave me created ways to to work. Mm -hmm. you, you just got back from uh, Montreal doing some ministry. Tell us a little bit about your. Ministry River of Life. What, what what's River of Life all about? How did it get started? Well, I got started with just starting with house meetings. Of course, uh, I had invitations to go to a reservation and different things. The next thing you know, I got an invitation to. I remember sleeping one time and uh, going up north and preaching, and this man was uh, sl sleeping in another bed. And right in the middle of the night, I was I was speaking in the, speaking in tongues. Yeah. And he jumped up and. Gave a prof, uh, began to give an interpretation. Says, "Go out in all the world to preach the gospel." And I said, "That's for me, Lord." Just mm -hmm. like that, I say, yeah. "Okay, Lord, I'll do it." Yeah. And right then, shortly after that, I got an invitation to go to Haiti. Mm -hmm. Right, to go to Haiti, and I didn't even know where Haiti was, and I had to look in a map and find it. But uh, I got an invitation, and miraculously, God provided. The funds to go there, mm -hmm. even enough uh, money to take there to, for for the pastors. Wow! And uh, I was right in the middle of a coup. Many years later, with uh, right the right when Baby Doc got, I was I was right in the middle of that coup. Mm -hmm. And uh, it w I could tell you so many things happened. You know how God just miraculously got me out of there. Yeah, it's amazing how God took me from one place to another. Mm -hmm. Just a couple, uh, just a, a not too long ago. I wanted to go to, I told my wife I wanted to go to England. I said, honey, I want to go to England. I feel that's where God wants me. Yeah. She says, well, go. But I said, I need a confirmation from the Lord first. Mm -hmm. And right about that time, Vance and Sarah Olson were driving down to, down London, and, and uh, Vance turns to Sarah and says, you know, uh, we should get Pastor Ray here because uh, uh, wonderful things happen when he's here. And she says, well, we need a confirmation from the Lord. And just right then, a car jumped in front of them. They had to slam on the brakes. Yeah. And right behind, the license plate said, call Ray. <laughs> Praise <laughs> the Lord. So, she, so a couple days later, I get a call. And uh, Vance calls me and says, Pastor Ray, would you, 
would you uh, want to come to London? I said, yeah, I was just talking about it the other day with my mm -hmm. wife. That's what we're she talking about, right? Yeah. Yeah. She said, uh, said uh, I'll get you, uh, we'll send you the ticket, just like that. Mm -hmm. so, and so a very supernatural uh, so provision, God, I, provision and call. Always, and, uh, I really believe in the supernatural power. You know, we got to be uh, miracle-minded on than, than street-minded, yeah, amen? Yeah. Because condemnation works with that, uh, being more conscious, a God-conscious than sin-conscious. And we can beat up ourselves for, for no reason at all because of uh, the way we think. So God, God provided your funds to go, to, to go on missions trip and, and right. the supernatural uh, leading to go a certain way. So now that you have a television ministry, how does that work? Do you... Uh, you Still that happened sin? supernaturally too. Okay. So I, I felt the lead, leading up to start a television program, uh, program and uh, I didn't even know nothing about how to do it. I yeah. I'm not a technical person. But you know, uh, I prayed about it and waited on the Lord. And finally, one day I said, this is it. I'm going to go on television. <laughs> so, so I just said that and I was ready to do it. I don't know how I was going to go about it. But next thing you know, Rabbi Gennady called me and says, Pastor Ray, I heard you're going on television. Well, I didn't tell anybody. Mm -hmm. uh, he's, I said, yeah. How do you know that? God spoke to me. You're going on television. He says, I want to come down there and, and help you uh, put on a program because yeah. he's very technical. Yeah. He show you how to put together a program. And, mm -hmm. and that's how we started. God, we ordered our first camera and the camera wasn't working very properly. But through that through that showing how to put together the, all that stuff, we learned all about the technical issues. And, yeah. and it's amazing mm -hmm. how God, uh, for the last now, over 10 years, we've been on television. So as Not you, only on television, but also on the Internet. Uh -huh. as, you, as you went, you learned. As yes, the, we on learned. The, on the yeah. go. We're still learning. Yeah. So you have um, meetings in your area? Do you, do you have a church today? Or do you, how do you yeah, we have a small fellowship. We have a... a, a, a an international conference every year because I travel internationally. I know very good friends all uh, all over the world, mm -hmm. and uh, I mean Africa, Cairo, Egypt, you know Israel. A bit, you name. Like I used to go to Switzerland, uh, at least three times a year. So what do you do in these on these meetings? What kind of meetings? Go to hold hold meetings, okay. miracle meetings, so. and. Uh, See God move in a like powerful you, way. Like, yeah, you're talking about healing meetings and stuff like that? Healing and deliverances. Yeah. Yes. So that's what, that's what meaning with those meetings are about. Yes. Uh, you know, it's, uh, it's amazing how God can anoint you to, even through the word of knowledge, discernment, and prophetically how he can bring healing to people's lives right, personally. Yeah. And it's amazing because uh, once you surrender, you see, you can't give up something you haven't got. Yeah. You, we got to get it first in order to give it. Mm -hmm. I believe in that. Once we surrender to the power of God, but not only just keep it, get that mentality, Jimmy, j gimme, gimme, my name is Jimmy, <laughs> want to get all the time. But not only when we get, we got to give it out there. Mm -hmm. And just like, just like you, I was uh, reminded about, uh, I was just reading the last uh, couple of days, uh, three days, I've been reading your book. Mm -hmm. And you have a, a really wonderful book about you know, I see the foundation, how you got saved and went through like a lot of things that I went through yeah. as a native. Mm -hmm. And you put together such a wonderful book about uh, how you dealt with the issues and how you are mentoring people out of that. You know, it's amazing when God saves you. He gives you sta stability mm -hmm. and must, uh, must uh, learn to uh, get mentored properly. We were talking about that uh, earlier today, about mentorship. Yeah. How is that important to you? There's lots of young men I, maybe I watching believe, right now. I believe through the years I've had some really good people that stood behind me and encouraged me yeah. and really taught me. I remember old Salvation uh, Army captain uh, would come to our services and really join with us and support us. He, in fact, he went to the, the head of the Salvation Army and says, you know, I love Pastor Ray and Betty, what they're doing, and mm -hmm. I want to give half of my tithe. Mm -hmm. So he got permission to do that. And, you know, people like that that supported yeah. us. You know, yeah. just encourage us uh, to teach us. And uh, we got to be teachable also. So you were mentored as well? Mentored with, with many wonderful people. And, and now you're mentoring people as well. Yes, I try, uh, we try to mentor many people that we can. Uh, natives, uh, yeah. uh, we, need, uh, we need more fathers out there mm -hmm. to, to, to uh, 
to, to teach people and to help them, yeah. to guide them in the, mm -hmm. in the truth. Yeah. Most of all, it's so important to get into the Word of God, right? Mm -hmm, yeah. To rightly divide the truth. Amen. Mm -hmm. So uh, you're, you're going to be um, doing some extra meetings this spring sometime? What kind oh, of yes. Meeting? And we're also, we're also inviting you to come down to yeah. do some mentorship. And yeah. I really believe this will be a springboard of uh, a lot of people will be uh, uh, taught uh, about mentorship. And, uh, and we have some great speakers like... Uh, brother uh, that was with you here, uh, Larry Salt. Larry Salt, what a wonderful brother. And uh, mm -hmm. people like that, we got maybe three or four people going to the weekend. Marie weekend. Shano. Yeah, some people like that yeah. will come and, and teach uh, people about mentorship. Because mm -hmm. we, we just, uh, you know, we got to not only have the just a little picture of, of what we should do, we should have a full picture. Mm -hmm. And you, you, like you, you went through it, you know all about what we need as natives, how God can raise us up and mm -hmm. put a, a, give us a purpose and a destiny. Right. Because uh, if we have, uh, God instills us a, a purpose and in, in when we're saved, but also have a really learn the ba basics of ministries. Mm -hmm. And we need that. The so full counsel of God. You, you, um, um, you feel like it, that's important for you to have a good, stable uh, beginning and uh, have a continual support? And I believe we need to be grounded properly. Mm -hmm. I believe we need to know, know what we believe in and because yeah. the Bible is a whole. It's, it covers every area of our lives. Mm -hmm. You know, so this is, this is so important that we as natives grow up to the full stature in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. Amen. You were talking about, uh, Pastor Ray, you talked about uh, the importance of some of our First Nations uh, men. We, we've, you and I have both seen... Um, uh, these guys running around without any mentorship, without any close ties to our fellowships or, or, or under another ministry. They might have evangelistic uh, type of ministries or, or traveling ministries, but they don't really have a home church. They don't have a real a home base where they can go and get help and, and, and support and counsel from their own pastors. That's it's important to be connected with somebody. Mm -hmm. It's important to have somebody that we can... Uh, we can't be an island where we can't... Uh, Mm -hmm. We need we need support. Why do you think that's happening? That these young men don't find mentorship and they don't sit under someone because of so the way we've been raised, because of mistrust and been hurt in mm -hmm. many ways, and maybe that could fall out on later of our life and mm -hmm. recognize that. Uh, but we need we need to we, trust yeah. somebody. We need to have and there's wonderful that's a safety, isn't it? This is safety. Yeah, it's a there's safety. a place we can go into where we can really be be uh, be covered. Yeah, you know. Mm -hmm. And I believe uh, the Bible says out of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. We need not only to, uh, like if you isolate scriptures, mm -hmm. you get in trouble. Yeah. But we get the full counsel, get the full understanding of the word of God rightly divided. And when we have people like that are surrounding us mm -hmm. to help us and encourage us, uh, I don't believe we can fail. Right. Because there's always, when we do fail, there's always some there. Somebody with a father's heart to restore us, right? Yeah. And many of many of our uh, native ministries, a lot of people need to be restored, right? Right. The right. failure of uh, restoring our native people—that's yeah. what uh, we we need. That okay? It's uh, important. It's been we talked about a lot of stuff, but uh, maybe there's um, a young man or a young woman out there, First Nations uh, person looking, and they they want to connect with ministry. What would you tell those people? It, in 30 seconds or, or less. Well, I believe you should find somebody that has the, has the knowledge of God and really has a stability. Because uh, if you have an example, you know, we have somebody to follow as an example. And I believe there's a lot of good people like you, you know, for, uh, can, that you can mentor. Mm -hmm. And we, this is a place to come to, uh, Faith City Church. I mean, I was here and a few services already, I got, I got encouraged, you know. Mm -hmm. And we need people like that to uh, have support. And you got a good bunch of people that are standing with you and mm -hmm. helping you. Uh -huh. And that's, that's so important. Yes. And family, family is so important. Mm -hmm. Our family, our children are very important because we need to encourage our, our, our family and our mm -hmm. children to, to, uh, to follow Jesus. Amen. Uh, oh, Pastor... Uh, Ray, thank you very much for, uh, for yes. dropping in on us here at Spirit Alive and Faith City Church. Uh, come back. Why don't you come back next time again? 
Yes, I and, really and appreciate. Uh, and remember that you know you gotta you gotta read this book about Roma. That you have that book. I yeah. really. My name is Roma. Roma, yes, yeah, Pastor yeah, Roma. Yeah. So yes. uh, if you're if you're watching here, uh, wherever you are across Canada or even in our region, uh, we want to tell you uh, we appreciate you. Thank you for tuning in today. And uh, there's there's information on the screen, and you can call uh, River of Life Ministries dot uh, com. And uh, you can find Pastor Ray there in his ministry. And also you can catch us anytime uh, at spiritalive.org uh, and find out a little bit about us. And you can call That's our right. office anytime and uh, we'll right. be here. God bless and we'll see you next time. Merry Christmas from Spirit Alive and Kenneth Hagen Ministries Canada. We want to bless you with a free book for the month of December. We are offering the book His Name Shall Be Called Wonderful by Reverend Kenneth E. Hagen. Learn about the wonderful name of Jesus and God's plan of redemption for us all. Get your free copy by calling 1-866-707-4362. Quote offer KIT-16SA12. Again, 1-866-707-4362 to order your free copy today. Join Pastor Roma at Bay City Church on Sunday mornings at 360 Black Bay Road. If you can't make it in person, watch the service online at 10.30 a.m. by going to the Bay City Church website. Hi, everybody. You know, the Bible says that uh, you know, Paul, the apostle, talked a lot about uh, the relationship matters between, you know, uh, his relationship actually with people. And then one of the most important relationships he had was being... Um, a father and a mentor to other people, other young people, for instance, with Timothy. And uh, over in Philippians chapter 3, verse 17, the King James Version says, Paul says, Brethren, be followers together of me, and mark them which also walk as you have us for an example. So a role model uh, or an example like that is someone who, whose example you can follow. A role model is you, you follow their lifestyle, and you follow their successes, and follow what they say in behavior and word and so it's really important for us to have role models in our lives and um, uh, I can't really uh, emphasize that enough for a lot of a lot of people and um, as a pastor for these number of years a quarter of a century and more right now we just finished talking to um, uh, Ray Martel he's been in the ministry for almost uh, as long as he's been saved maybe almost 40 years and um, he talked about how important that for us uh, First Nations uh, young ministers need to follow someone and, f uh, you know, uh, uh, submit their lives to someone else's uh, care so that they can mentor us, so that we can follow them. And a lot of times, some of our First Nations uh, uh, traveling ministers and, and maybe perhaps who, those who call themselves evangelists, um, and uh, by the way, there's also a good teaching on evangelism and what actually really is an evangelist. Sometimes people call themselves evangelists when they're actually just traveling um, preachers. So there's a very biblical dis distinction between what is actually a New Testament evangelist. But um, we talked about the importance of coming under a, um, uh, someone else, being a follower of somebody else, and the, the need for us First Nations people to, to have role models, uh, fathers of faith who we can look to for, for leadership and for uh, 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 counsel and for, and for somebody we can go to. And... Um, Sometimes a lot of these folks don't have that. And because uh, I know, because I've been in the ministry for 25 plus years, almost 30 years now. And uh, I've seen a lot of these guys, they don't have a home church and they don't have any, um, uh, not all of them, but you know, some of them, lots of them, uh, they don't have someone they can go to. And so if they run into marriage difficulties, uh, personal problems as a uh, minister, or, or uh, if they have financial matters or whatever, they usually come and call and I usually ask uh, who's your pastor and who's your who, who's your fellowship and many of them don't have a fellowship to go to or that they can mark as uh, that's their home church or that's the ministry or that's the person they look to and so I find it very difficult when I see that happening and so if you're that kind of a person that needs to uh, you know um, that is that kind of person that, you, that doesn't have a mentor Ship program or someone they can you need to find somebody today um, be what the scripture says follow someone like Paul says also in um, some of these other scriptures that we've we've been talking about and uh, I want to mention another scripture that we read Philippians 
chapter 3, verse 17, where he says, Be followers together of me, and mark those people who also um, uh, walk as, as an example. So over in uh, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1 and 2, Paul says this, Be therefore followers of God as dear children, Walk in love as Christ also loved us and gave himself for us as an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling savor. So uh, Paul, Paul emphasized in Philippians now and uh, Ephesians chapter 1 and 2 that um, we followers of God as dear children. You know, uh, children imitate their parents. Children imitate their fathers. And, you know, when, when someone has a great father growing up, those kids are very strong in their lifestyle as a Christian. So learn to be someone who follows God. Learn to be somebody who is uh, following somebody as an example. So you need, you need that. It's very much needed in ministry. And for your own life, you know, um, people read after certain authors and certain spiritual people in, in, in the Christian world, and they take their books and they follow that. And that's mentoring yourself. And so that's important to do that. And, um, but also not only in books and, 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 and uh, writings like that, but you have to find, follow somebody, uh, somebody you can sit down, someone who knows you, somebody you can open your life to and um, talk to them about, about your hurts and your pains and disappointments. We would like to give you an opportunity to ask Jesus into your life if you haven't done that. Say this simple prayer. Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord and my Savior. Friends, if you prayed that prayer, contact the information on the screen and we will love to send you some material to help you in your new walk with Christ.